East and South Asia meetup event. Uh, we, we, I promise as the founder of this, uh, this meetup that is going to be exciting uh, and uh, quite interesting. I like to think all of our meetup events are, uh, especially because we have, uh, you know, excellent people who, who have been helping me with this uh, organization lately. Uh, you know, two of them I uh, mentioned we have uh, David De Silva, who is now our de facto moderator. Uh, there's Dave, and of course I should mention Vera, uh, who's uh, you know Dark Stars um, media director, and she has been doing a great job helping us out uh, at Mesa here. Uh, you know, make our videos and events look uh, extra professional, extra fancy. So, so I'm really excited to have Vera here joining us. Uh, we today also have David Wilkinson, who uh, is the CEO of Dark Star, the sponsor of this event. Uh, David, are you here somewhere? I I'm, see you. I'm here. Yes. Uh, thank you. So there's David Wilkinson, the CEO of Dark Star, and if, uh, Dark Star is the um, sponsor of this particular event and also the one we had previously. And I would like to, I hope that, you know, the next few events will be Dave, I'm going to pass the mic over to you to do your usual, you know, um, amazing job at moderating. <laughs> <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere, Dr. Faisal Shah Khan. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, it's, it's joyful to be here. And I, I should acknowledge that, that Dr. Khan uh, is also a founder of, of Dark Star. Uh, it's always joyful uh, when you have provided us here at MESA, the, the Middle East and South Asia meetup. It's a scientific meetup that is now closely correlated with uh, Dark Star, where we are showcasing our partners. We are showcasing uh, our products uh, in that our products, we require our partners to work with us. We're looking to achieve the circular economy. We'll be talking more about those things. And I do want to do a shout out here to uh, Captain Jeffrey Cole, uh, who is uh, here as a, as a guest, as well as uh, Sharanya. Oh, uh, Captain Jeffrey Cole uh, is on our corporate uh, advisory board uh, for the airline industry. And to recognize uh, Sharanya, Sharanya is our latest Dark Star intern. She's responsible for uh, PCB, that's printed uh, computer board. Uh, and uh, we have an exciting project to talk about on another day. I'd also like to acknowledge Alexander Jivov of Hopeful. And I'll ask him to say a word in a moment. Uh, Alexander has been uh, with me from the beginning in uh, June or July uh, at the York University for Quantum Computing for Social Impact, uh, where Alex was one of the first students. And Alex has uh, stuck around. Uh, Alex is here uh, because we're creating an ETF, uh, an exchange traded fund uh, which is the highest value that the stock market, that the stock exchange, for what we can see, uh, can come about. And uh, Alexander, over the months, uh, has uh, created uh, this on his own volition, and we're very pleased that he's here as an observer, and will be joining us uh, again a week from today on March 29th, where we'll learn more about this and what it represents uh, for the, the financial marketplaces. With that as an introduction to Alexander, could you please talk a little bit more about Hopeful as you give us all hope, as well as your position uh, with Quantum Amplify. Take it away, Alex. Well, Dave, uh, thank you. Your introductions are always uh, absolutely top tier. So you flatter me there, but... Uh, of course. So I am here primarily in my capacity as the newly appointed project director of Quantum Amplify. Uh, Quantum Amplify is a project born out of months and months of research, as well as working with the team here in order to try and attract venture capital and private investment into the private quantum company space, essentially trying to bring a spotlight onto uh, 
many of the private pure play quantum computing companies that are growing in the space very rapidly and accelerating adoption of quantum. Um, I also am primarily the CEO and co-founder of Hopeful Inc. Uh, we are an artificial intelligence company based in Toronto, uh, recently named one of the top 100 analytics companies of 2020 that specifically uh, uses artificial intelligence to allow nonprofits and charities to tell their stories better and quantify their impact on social media as it relates to fundraising. So very high level about me, but looking forward to the 29th where I get to speak a little bit more about what we're cooking up on the Quantum Amplify side. Thank you, thank you, Alex. And uh, just to position this uh, and uh, to foreshadow how important we think that uh, Lucy and Richard's company is, in terms of quantum specific companies, uh, and some background here uh, with Darkstar. Uh, Darkstar shares uh, a resource. Dr. Faisal Shah Khan uh, is an advisor for Quantum Computing Inc., uh, where uh, his work uh, helped launch the company. And I, I would uh, say, Faisal, I would ask you to uh, properly qualify that. And today that company is approaching, I think, $250 million uh, on the uh, stock market, uh, being the first quantum specific company to be on the stock market. Now there's a second one that's showing up uh, where uh, Sharanya uh, participated uh, uh, with uh, Denise, who's the vice president of, of Ion Q. Ion Q is expected to bring in or be valued at $2 billion. Uh, this is a sort of quantum leap, if you pardon the pun, uh, that we were expecting to see in the quantum ecosystem as we are following the ecosystem of pre-2000 where exchange traded funds uh, first showed up. Uh, so this is where we have outside counsel uh, in, in the form of Alex uh, and his banker friends to guide us through this, to anticipate what the value is as we appear to be following our plan to help us achieve the circular economy related to the UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals. A little bit of a, of a smattering there for the background. Now, uh, I would also like to acknowledge uh, Michael Tuhay, Dr. Michael Tuhay from York University. Uh, Michael is on my board at York University for the York University Quantum Computing for Social Impact, uh, which relates to both Alex and quite frankly relates to Dark Star, what we're actually up to, uh, which we, we think is a whole lot of, of good and we would uh, uh, look forward to your thoughts uh, on this work. Now, uh, Vera, you were so good to introduce me to Lucy. Lucy is your client. And would you kindly uh, share some background information about Lucy? And when you say go, I will share that video uh, that you created for Lucy and Richard, one of the nicest videos that I have ever seen uh, in terms of professional videos and we're hoping you'll make one for, for us, uh, hint, hint. Uh, Vera, you, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. Um, hi everyone, I'm Vera and I'm the uh, COO of Wayworking Women. It's the uh, biggest North America Chinese entrepreneurs network. We have 80,000 um, subscribers on our platform. Uh, majority of um, our group is from um, North American Chinese women groups and also um, Chinese women who currently live in mainland China, uh, but they all have um, overseas background. So I'm really happy to um, join Dark Star as a media director and helping everybody look super nice <laughs> on the media presence. Um, earlier, I, I would say um, last year, towards the end of uh, last year, I got to know Lucy. She is a member of our CEO club. Um, and she came to us um, for um, 
um, suggestions for uh, their video campaign. So we actually created a really nice uh, video campaign to introduce BVC Pay um, and the wonderful cat tea uh, to the market. It's a very new um, concept for payment. I had to educate myself on how to use them, but I'm really excited to see BVC Pay as widely used, um, especially here on Canada and uh, a lot on a lot of e-commerce platforms. So um, Dave, would you share this one minute video with everybody so they can have visually have a good um, impression of uh, BVC Pay? Yes, it is such a beautiful video and here we go. Remember how amazed you were when these were invented? What if we told you we made money in payment that way? To be fast, real-time fast. To be stable, to be global, to be secure and traceable. Introducing CAD T, the first digital currency 100% asset-backed and processing thousands of transactions per second. BBC Pay, your very own decentralized digital wallet powered by blockchain allows you to use CAD T anywhere, anytime, no matter who you are. So join us in this digital economy where money moves like it never did before. The future is here. And very nicely done, Vera. Thank you. Lucy, did you like it? I loved it. When I saw the video, I was like, "That that's amazing. <laughs> Even though we kind of had to go through um, two or three rounds of edits, but in the end, the results was, um, we really liked it. I thought it was very nice when I saw it. It was like, wow. Uh, now the, 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 que the question here, does the, does the uh, president uh, of the company uh, like it? Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Richard, Richard Zhao. Uh, Richard, we met in Richmond Hill at the coffee shop with, with Lucy. I was so impressed with your thirst and excitement uh, for technology, how you've been at the foundation uh, of all these foundational technologies, or rather you've been at the ground floor of these foundational technologies from AI to, to blockchain to IoT. Uh, but Richard, first of all, isn't that a great little video? Oh, you're on, you're on mute. Oh, let me... Okay, maybe I can go ahead. I'll introduce him a little bit first. <laughs> okay, so to start off, um, hi everyone, my name's Lucy and I'm an investor and CMO with BVCI, uh, which stands for Blockchain Venture Capital Inc. And uh, to start off, I'm very happy that everyone can join us tonight. Um, I want to introduce to you all my longtime friend and colleague, Richard. Um, like Dave said, he is the founder of BVCI. And Richard has over 20 years of industry experience already, especially in uh, information technology, uh, internet, and energy. And he's He's held positions at EMC, Siemens, and Apple Techs, and he is also currently the president of Green Panda Capital Corp, which is also a publicly traded company on TSX right now, um, as well as acting as an advisor um, to multiple Fortune 500 and NASDAQ listed companies. And um, there's, I've known him for 10 years. There's like so many things I want to say about him, but um, I'm going to pass it on to Richard. Uh, he's going to introduce BBCI to you guys tonight. Thank you, uh, Lucy, for your kind of introduction. And thanks, uh, everyone. Thanks, uh, Dave and Vera, for bringing us uh, together and also provide the BBCI this uh, wonderful opportunity to know so many uh, new friends. So as Lucy uh, just uh, said, yeah, my name is uh, Richard. I'm um, um, the president and the CEO of a blockchain venture uh, Capital Inc. So our company uh, established in uh, January uh, 2018. Um, 
we are uh, blockchain development uh, and uh, research technology uh, company. So uh, right now we um, uh, we focused on three uh, major uh, products. The first one is as just as uh, um, uh, Dave uh, introduced uh, that's our um, uh, underlying uh, infrastructure uh, blockchain, uh, BVC chain. The second one that's uh, our uh, uh, next generation uh, decentralized um, um, uh, the payment, uh, the wallet. The third one that's very uh, interesting, that's uh, the brand new uh, solution. It's a uh, uh, KIT, C-A-D-T, uh, the first um, um, Canadian dollar uh, backed uh, a stable coin, a stable token, uh, one to one packed to Canadian uh, currency, uh, support by um, uh, Schedule One Chartered Bank, uh, trust, uh, Concentra Trust in uh, Saskatchewan, Canada. So we are the first one right now successfully launch this uh, stable coin and the uh, user are able to use a uh, KIT as a major digital payment for daily uh, spending uh, for a purchase. So right now we have, uh, we signed uh, multiple contracts with the major uh, market players like uh, e-commerce uh, uh, portals and also the shopping, major uh, shopping malls in, in uh, Toronto and, uh, and Vancouver. And also we are partner with um, a couple of uh, um, labor unions, for example, firefighter uh, unions and uh, Luna's uh, uh, unions. So we will provide this uh, digital solution for their uh, members. So, and, uh, and uh, we also did uh, a couple of uh, presentation to municipalities in, uh, in, in Ontario. So hopefully we can provide uh, this um, next generation digital payment solution to the cities and, uh, uh, and uh, public uh, agents. So hopefully uh, we can work uh, together. So as uh, our professor David just uh, introduced, uh, um, so uh, I would like uh, to learn more about uh, quantum uh, computing technology. Hopefully we can find out uh, a synergy to work uh, together. So we know a blockchain um, is the next generation of a payment and uh, Mm -hmm. On the computer, the next next generation. So yeah, we want to work together and present the best solution to the current uh, you know uh, generation. Okay, thank you, thank, thank you very much. Mm. Oh, uh, mm. very very nice, Richard. That's a very nice introduction. I learned more things every time I speak to you. I learn more things. So you've done a nice job of talking about uh, and as as uh, Lucy uh, and uh, Vera mentioned. Uh, we're dealing with blockchain technology. We're working, we're, you're dealing with cryptocurrency. CAD T, C A D T, is a cryptocurrency. It is a stable coin, which means it's pegged to the Canadian dollar. So, unlike, block, unlike Bitcoin, which was just under uh, $70,000 Canadian today, the, the uh, value of a single CAD T will always be $1. And what it gives up in terms of the, the uh, remarkable rise of Bitcoin, it gains in terms of practical benefits as a way of exchanging money uh, between any two organizations that, or individuals uh, that have the CAD T uh, wallet that I mentioned. Richard, would that be a correct statement? Right, yes. Mm. Okay, very good. And yes, to- CAD T. Okay. Mm. And we'll look at we'll look at that, uh, and we'll put it on the screen in in a, in a moment. What will uh, you had mentioned uh, that we're looking you're looking to work with us uh, as a quantum computer quantum technology company, and Faisal will be talking about that. And what we can do, which which will be talking about uh, the talking about uh, security, primary security. Now, to put this in perspective. Vera is the mom of our youngest intern, uh, 10-year-old Aaron, the quantum kid. And uh, what Aaron did when we spoke to him about what we're up to is he drew a comic strip. (laughs) 
So let's look at this comic strip here. And there we have Aaron, the quantum kid. And there are three panels, uh, panel one, panel two, panel three. Panel one is CAD T stable coin in the before mode. So in the current mode right now, uh, where it is acting as a, as a, as a value, a mechanism of transferring value. Uh, just as uh, Bitcoin started off that way, we have CAD T as a possibly more stable approach and more appropriate for high value transact, or rather for high volume transactions, as I believe that there are several thousands of transactions, uh, Richard, that you've designed uh, your product to be able to manage. We'll talk about in a second. So on the uh, website, there's a leaf and there's a little rocket ship. And here, Aaron called this normal mode. Then in the second panel here, we have the after, the after being after dark star shows up. And the, the, the leaf mode is turned into an arrow leaf mode. And uh, we see here the little rocket ship has gone purple and it is now powerful and it has all sorts of laser beams to protect the financial marketplace. He's referred to it as the turbo beast mode where there's a turbo button. So we're hoping that once we work with you, we can turn the turbo mode, the turbo beast mode onto CAD T. And we see here someone who is working out and that would actually be Dr. Faisal Shah Khan. Uh, he works out. When we first started a few months ago, his students back in, in uh, Abu Dhabi in the UAE, he has female students who also work out and they had muscles bigger than him. And now Faisal started working out and his muscles are bigger. And if there's time, maybe Faisal, you can sort of show your muscles uh, later on. Anyways, this muscle mode is also related to our symbol, which is a dark leaf with a little quantum sprinkle here. Look into the third panel, we see the turbo button, we see the other two icons, Dark Star, which is the company, and we have a product called FinTech, which Faisal will talk about. And I see there's a reference to COIN, which is the quantum protection of cryptocurrencies, for example, CAD T. And we also see HFTQ, which stands for high frequency trading on the quantum cloud, uh, which is a product we'll be getting more into next week. And as also where Alex showed up a few minutes uh, previously, he talked about the ETF or exchange traded fund model. And so uh, what I'll do now is perhaps uh, come back to you, Richard, and let's look at the websites and to get some more basic information. You gave a very good overview and perhaps we can talk about it uh, in, in a little bit more detail uh, as it took me a bit to catch on and we want our viewers to have that benefit. So here we see in January 18th, your company, Blockchain Venture Capital Inc. launched the first commercial bank backed Canadian digital currency, CAD T, with support from Concentra Trust. And this is such an amazing accomplishment, Richard, to launch a stable coin where a Schedule One bank is supporting is something that I didn't think I would see for a few years. In doing so, it means that the central banks are supporting your cryptocurrency. Isn't that correct, Richard? Um, not as a central bank to support it. However, we, uh, we do uh, get uh, legal opinion from a uh, regulator like uh, OSFI, CDIC, Payment Canada, Ontario Securities uh, Commission, uh, FinTrack, MSB. So we can say we fully comply with uh, all financial rules. So yeah, because we are still, uh, you know, a conventional uh, financial product. So we are, you know, under uh, overseen by by a by a custodial agreement and the escrow service. Very good. Thank you for for correcting me. Uh, in that a bank is supporting it. Uh, this is uh, what's required for a proper stable coin. And this is where I feel you've mated successfully 
the decentralized nature of Bitcoin with the centralized nature of banking, and you brought them together in harmony. I would also add, uh, by looking at the blockchain venture capital, you had mentioned that one of the products, and this would be the tool uh, used on the phone, the wallet, that two users would have in order uh, for them to transact using CAD T. So for example, they would have their Canadian money, uh, they would convert it into CAD T one for one. So $10 Canadian, $10 CAD T, and mm -hmm. then it could be transferred to another user uh, mm -hmm. anywhere in the world uh, mm -hmm. who has a smartphone with mm -hmm. the, the same uh, wallet. Uh, mm -hmm. Richard, if you could please correct uh, slash and enhance that statement and share with everybody the benefits of doing this, why we would do this instead of using cash or some other uh, currency. Um, well, um, as, a ben as a, uh, Professor David just uh, mentioned, uh, the benefit uh, why we are using um, um, stable uh, coin uh, because uh, you know the price is uh, fixed and the one to one packed to Canadian uh, uh, currency, which means that there will be um, no price up and down. So mm -hmm. um, and also uh, for especially for the internet uh, uh, international uh, trade, so international import export uh, business. Uh, so for international. Uh, money transfer, so there will be no more high cost of uh, uh, foreign currency exchange uh, cost. And, uh, you know, this is blockchain, which means um, it's uh, instant uh, clearing, instant uh, payment, instant uh, clearing, and uh, uh, instant um, uh, settlement, which, you know, uh, compared to other uh, payment way, like uh, PayPal, uh, uh, um, MasterCard, uh, Visa card, so we are instant uh, payment, which means uh, the, the moment uh, when you make the payment and uh, you can receive the fund uh, right away and you don't need to wait uh, another uh, one week or 10 days until the money uh, fully transferred to your bank account. That's, uh, the, ma that's uh, the, um, the major uh, advantage for uh, uh, using uh, uh, KIT. And also another reason that the cost, uh, we are we can we are proudly say we are lowest uh, cost uh, um, of a digital payment uh, right now because for the token to token payment it's a free it's a zero zero cost, um, and uh, and 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 uh, um, for example right now uh, people when uh, people to people uh, communication we use. Uh, uh, WhatsApp, uh, uh, face, uh, Facebook, uh, and other uh, communication too. It's a, it's a, it's a almost a free service for people to people communication. However, why we still pay high cost uh, for the money uh, transfer or money uh, communication? So we aim to reduce the cost uh, for the money and fund uh, transfer. So hopefully, in the coming uh, years, uh, we will feel you know, uh, there will be no more high cost uh, for the money uh, transfer. So we will provide uh, this uh, free financial service uh, for the all uh, money uh, transfer. There will be no more high cost uh, for Visa card, MasterCard, PayPal uh, uh, processing fee. So that's uh, yeah, another um, advantages for, for digital payment, especially for the stable, stable, uh, stable token. Very good. Okay, thanks. My, my pleasure. That was a very nice explanation. And uh, let's go through the benefits again. Uh, instant clearing and settlement. Now, Payments Canada was my client uh, a few summers ago, and this was this is their their major interest. And I would suggest that uh, we bring to their attention uh, your product. Uh, I have been interviewed by Payment Canada for the purpose of uh, understanding, for them to understand 
the the benefits uh, of cryptocurrency. And what I could do is a little bit of a follow up. So I'll just mention that there, Richard, and we'll follow up on that because the purpose of these meetups is is to is to learn from each other, but as well as to uh, be able to move our projects forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one thing I'll do. So Payments Canada mm -hmm. follow up. Okay, okay. very good. Mm -hmm. Now, the second thing that you mentioned is reducing cost. Uh, and this is in, in, also for international money transfers. This is a very good thing in that the uh, in that it, it appears to, to possibly an, be an alternative to using Visa, MasterCard, and uh, and and PayPal. Uh, mm -hmm. Would did I did I make a correct statement there? Oh yeah 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 good yeah right okay thanks okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, is is that would that be uh, the ultimate vision uh, for for the product? Oh yeah, that's a alternative uh, digital payment other than uh, credit card and uh, and um, uh, PayPal. So yeah, that's alternative way. And also, I believe uh, that will be kind of like uh, transformation. We transform from a, a typical. Um, credit card or PayPal based uh, payment to uh, next generation peer to peer uh, instant uh, uh, payment and the low cost payment. Okay. So I, 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 oh, maybe it's kind of like a uh, 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 transformation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I wasn't, uh, wasn't aware of that. And the first one, I think I came up with, you might've told it me before, but I feel, I felt like I, I, I came up with it by myself. So I feel very smart at this moment. <laughs> I appreciate though the background information that Lucy has uh, provided me. Now, what this tells me is uh, there will come a point where Payments Canada, where the financial systems will wanna go into a next generation or the next gen level. And peer to peer is is always is on everyone's mind because uh, this is the term that is synonymous with Bitcoin, and we've seen how how popular Bitcoin is. Uh, so what we can do maybe is in our follow up meeting uh, a week from today we can talk a little bit more about that. Uh, we can have a little meet up. We can talk about uh, how this can fit in and how uh, how Darkstar can can support that because this seems relevant to the quantum city. And I think maybe uh, this is the point, uh, Faisal, where uh, perhaps if you can introduce the Dark Star product line, FinTech, uh, with a focus on coin, the uh, quantum security blanket, that's a new term I'm, I'm making, uh, Faisal might be cringing as I uh, want to come up with these uh, easy to, think about terms. And we have Faisal though, to always ground things in his scientific work, his scientific papers, which are, are peer reviewed. But if I say a term Faisal, that's not quite right, please correct me live. But if I say a term that makes sense, uh, let me know, I'll write it down and, and uh, make its way uh, in, into Aaron's uh, comic strip. Certainly. <laughs> No, Dave, the quantum security blanket is actually very nice. I, I like that. Sure. Very apt. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Dave. I think, yeah, so I will just go ahead and share my screen if Vera can, uh, or actually, I think I'm allowed to do that. Uh, no, I think I'll have Vera. I've, I've stopped my share. Okay, let me try it now again. And yes, here we go. Right, so this is the um, uh, the, the product line that Dave asked me to uh, share with you. Uh, this is, um, I'm these slides I used, I've used before, so I'm jumping in the middle where the uh, mention of coin and its related IP and other products show up. Uh, so I'll start here. Uh, forgive me for not having a nice introductory page here. <laughs> um, so let me just really quickly uh, mention that the product line which uh, of which Coin, the quantum 
security blanket, right, as Dave called it, that can be put on top of uh, um, CAD T, for example, a stable coin, right, um, is based on what we call uh, secure uh, with a Q, of course, to, to uh, you know, emphasize that this is a quantum technology solution. And the science behind this uh, idea is uh, the uncertainty you can source from a quantum system. So uh, certainly in the, you know, in the mainstream um, scientific understanding uh, knowledge, I think a lot of people might be familiar with uh, the notion of uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And uh, that is exactly what we're using that, you know, here to, to set up our IP and then a following product line. The idea is that, you know, when you have these quantum mechanical objects, which are extremely small, uh, you know, they have a totally different set of physical rules they follow. Uh, one nice thing, uh, it could be a bad thing, but certainly in this case, it's a nice thing that happens is that there's no way to predict in any sort of, you know, uh, even with respect to some kind of a distribution, probability distribution, uh, what their behavior is going to be. They, they, this is what's known as truly true randomness. Um, versus what you see, you know, the use of the word randomness, uh, you know, to create security in a, in a regular computer, for example, we all have desktops and laptops and even mobile phones, right? When we uh, encrypt something using this technology that's out there today, uh, you have a source, there's a, there's a randomness that's playing a role there, but it's not true randomness, it is pseudo randomness. There's an algorithm, a mathematical algorithm, set of rules that is generating that random, random key, right? That randomness. And with a dedicated opponent, right? And there are many today, right? Uh, you can actually be pretty quickly assured that, you know, the, the, the pseudo random process in your computer is leaving a pattern behind and that pattern can be very fairly quickly and fairly easily uh, you know deciphered by the opponent and put to good use it doesn't have to happen immediately right this is why you have these things called zero day attacks where people decrypt, decrypt your ideas your 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 keys and they just sit there quietly not to like you know uh, leave, you know to give a hint that they have done so they sit there quietly for the right time when you're doing something big you might be making a huge transaction, right? And that's when they quietly just strike, take your data, take your transactions, take your money, take your time and so forth. And there was a $2.8 million heist recently. That is correct. There was a um, heist of a blockchain. Uh, Dave, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, that that was what it was, right? Yes, yes, it was, it was a hacker steals 2.8 million. Uh, dollars from cryptocurrency. After you go through the slide, I can I can share that, and this is the reason why, uh, uh, Dr. Khan, we've come up with Coin uh, because cryptocurrency uh, is uh, money, and people are beginning to steal it, and we're able to offer a new level of security, which you're explaining right now. Exactly. Uh, so I think I might, in fact, in my next couple of slides, have a link to the news item you're mentioning. Uh, but let's see if it comes up or not. But the idea is that, again, based on this IP of source, uh, quantum source uncertainty, we have this uh, fintech, you know, financial sector related uh, product vision, product roadmap. <clears throat> we call it fintech, of course, with a Q, right? And uh, we think of that as the killer financial app because... Um, it can do exactly what Dave just said, right? <laughs> and what I said earlier, uh, but I'll say more now and in a little bit more detail. Uh, so first of all, what this con consists of is, is a, um, you know, any piece of conventional computing technology. So we like to uh, focus on a phone, a mobile phone, because these are ubiquitous. These are, you know, more in, in, um, uh, more in more use today than just, you know, your desktops or laptops. So we are focusing on a phone that is quantum secured and we're calling it Sentinel. Uh, the idea is that we're putting quantum Sentinels in your device and, and they're going to protect you from, uh, you know, from, from unwanted attacks and hacks. So what happens is that you take a, a, a piece of equipment, um, in fact, it could be a chip, right? And on that chip, you would have the ability to source quantum randomness. 
true randomness. And then you make it part of the hardware, you interface it with the hardware of your you know, favorite phone, mobile phone, smartphone. And uh, you then write some software that allows you to uh, make all, as many apps as you want uh, in your phone to work uh, with this quantum source uh, you know, security. Um, you can do, well, so one, one question could be, what can I do with such a phone, right? So, so going back to the financial sector, of course, you, know, you can run securely, in fact, quantum securely, your uh, trading apps. You can do trading on your phone, right? You don't have to sit in front of your computer. Uh, you could, by the way, you could attach that quantum chip on your uh, computer and do the same thing. But if you wish to be mobile, then you can do it through your phone, right? And you also can potentially get superior transaction speed this is what uh, Dave actually labeled as a turbo button. Right? <laughs> uh, this is the idea that you can nowadays, I think starting a couple of years ago or less, uh, have access to quantum computers over the cloud, right? So choose your favorite quantum computer, quantum processor, uh, you know, connect with it. You will have quantum security on your phone, or so it'll be, you know, more enhanced security. And you can do your transactions on the quantum computer and have an advantage doesn't have that facility. And, and Faisal, if, if I may, the, because we're moving, because we want this to be a practical application uh, for the federal governments, it's necessary that we do not make the same error or have the same constraints uh, pre, uh, it, uh, in the early days of Bitcoin and even today where the transaction speed is once every 10 minutes, a, a new block is written. Uh, this is a very slow transaction speed, which made Bitcoin not practical as a replacement for modern transactions using, for example, Visa or MasterCard, where uh, Richard's CAD T uh, is able to transact thousands of times per second. Uh, Richard, could you just come on and uh, just confirm or deny or qualify that statement? Yes, yes, you are right. So we are, so we can support uh, up to uh, 5,000 um, concurrent uh, transactions per second. So our uh, TPS is uh, 5,000 above. We believe uh, that um, um, fastest um, um, blockchain infrastructure, blockchain technology so far. Mm. The, the, the yeah. fastest blockchain in the West <laughs> and the East. Mm. Now, uh, because of this unusual speed, Richard, this, this mm. uh, significant increase to speeds, uh, which are, which may be, uh, the same speed or sufficient speed to compete with Visa and MasterCard. Uh, that's that's my my thoughts, and and I would be open to your thoughts. And uh, we would have even Alex uh, talk about that next week. But for the moment, let's assume it's it's going to be fast enough. The this is uh, why uh, Dr. Faisal Shah Khan and, and myself and David Wilkinson were very interested in CAD T as a candidate for COIN. We wanna solve uh, what will be a real world problem, simulating the problem rather than being held back with current technology. That was our challenge until Vera introduced us to Lucy and Richard of CAD T because CAD T has the actual transactions. So we are able to do a full blown test and then present that to organizations for example, like Payments Canada. Uh, so I just wanted to recognize, uh, Richard, uh, that what you've accomplished is necessary for the level of work that we're doing, uh, acknowledging that uh, we've engaged with the US government, including the US Defense Department. Uh, so we really feel necessary uh, that we are working with solid products, solid technology, and Richard, yours was the first in the world that I found that met that criteria. Uh, with that said, uh, back back to you, Dr. Cod. Thank you, Dave. 
so let me move to my next slide here where um, I talk about Dark Star Coin, which is uh, the usual coin, but spelled with a Q because it's a quantum coin. Um, and we are introducing uh, the term quantum secure digital asset or just a quantum asset. And uh, perhaps this might surprise some, the idea of coin or quantum coin or quantum money, in fact, <clears throat> as it was called originally, goes back to 1969. That was, you know, uh, it was a good year apparently, not just for, you know, uh, cultural revolutions, but also for science. Uh, and the, the professor who came up with this was Steven Weisner. Uh, I believe he's in, uh, Tel Aviv right now, a uh, professor. I could be wrong, but he's in Israel. Uh, that, that much I think I'm pretty sure of. Yeah. Uh, so great idea he came up with. And the question of course was how do you implement it? And you know, as is the case with many good ideas, he was way ahead of his time. Um, but of course now, you know, we're living in such a good time that uh, we can see his idea come to fruition. And COIN is our planned quantum secured cryptocurrency you know, based on that idea. Uh, so what COIN does is, as I said um, before in my previous slide, it introduces quantum uncertainty uh, to cryptocurrency, right? So there's technology available for that. It's a fairly mature technology. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's mature to the extent that it doesn't require tens of millions of dollars to implement. It's maybe, you know, 10,000 or less dollars to implement, for example, right? Uh, it depends, of course, on what you're trying to implement and how complicated the implementation would be, but uh, just to kind of make a point, you know, in the case of quantum computers, you typically need tens of millions of, millions of dollars to initiate the building of one and then take on more money as the project proceeds. That is not the case with, uh, with COIN uh, or the quantum technology that underlies it. Uh, so <clears throat> as is the case, as is, you know, Dave said, uh, COIN allows for quantum securing any blockchain and any associated cryptocurrency. So of course the you know candidate uh, we have we are considering is Richard's uh, cat T uh, for obvious good reasons as Dave just pointed out. Um, one other thing about Coin is that it's a hybrid classical quantum solution to the problem of cryptocurrency security, and this is what I think there's a link right here to the news article from uh, I think earlier this year where a hacker stole 2.8 million dollars from cryptocurrency vault despite unhackable blockchain security. So clearly, you know, another blanket of security can be put on this vault and this whole notion of blockchain, right? It's not as unhackable as it might seem. Um, and, you know, this security blanket, if it's quantum, it comes with some pretty heavy duty, you know, promises. And the promise of unhackability is one of them, right? So as far as that layer, the blanket itself is concerned, it's, it's you know, backed by nature itself, the quantum nature of uh, the, the quantumness of nature itself that is going to be unhackable. So of course, you know, it'd be great to test at some stage, you know, how, how the hacker <laughs> deals with this blanket, but the fundamental proofs and the fundamental uh, notions are that these uh, security blankets, quantum security blankets are unhackable in principle. Uh, Quine is designed as a centralized security mechanism over the quantum cloud. So now the quantum cloud term, perhaps I should uh, talk about that first. Uh, as I mentioned, you can access quantum processors, quantum computers today, uh, right, over the cloud. Um, but that cloud is connected to the regular internet. You know, the internet has been around since the 1960s, became commercialized in the 1990s and onwards. Uh, it does not have quantum capabilities, right? That's the point. Uh, people are working around the world on a notion of a quantum internet. And when that happens, you know, you will have even more powerful uh, features added to uh, quantum assets like coin. But for the moment, uh, you know, given that you have regular, the regular internet over which you're transacting, uh, coin offers substantial benefits like improved anti-money laundering ability and anti-terrorist funding security. Uh, so one of the things that COIN does, or the technology that underlies it, that it allows for uh, intrusion detection. Right? So for intrusion detection to be there means that you can uh, prevent hackers from getting in, right? And as soon as you detect something fishy going on, you can reset the whole process and start again. 
this is a guaranteed process. It's not just a promise of a software, right? Some vendor of a software saying this will happen because I say so. This promise comes from nature itself. So it's a very strong promise. And uh, that's why I think Quine is, is, uh, is a very substantial, uh, you know, uh, technology for, for uh, as a quantum asset. And it certainly is the future. In fact, it's now, right? The, the, the future is now sort of thing uh, in terms of cryptocurrency and blockchain. Uh, Dave, would you like me to talk about blockchain from a quantum point of view, or is that perhaps beyond the scope? Well, uh, I, I do like that idea. So let's, let's qualify in terms of, of timing. It's, it's 8.52. We're scheduled to go to 8.30. What would be nice, and the advisement from Vera, is we, we do this in one-hour blocks. Uh, so we complete uh, this presentation for 9 o'clock, then continue the conversation, just as we've done in the past after the presentation. What I, what I think we should do is uh, have a uh, five minute discussion on uh, the topic that you offered, uh, which is blockchain uh, and quantum. And uh, that'll take us uh, to with three minutes to spare. At, uh, at that point, I will uh, 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 bring in uh, Richard for, for commentary uh, close off uh, the official part of part one and uh, perhaps even uh, give a nod to Alex who's listening uh, for his ETF and we will then continue our conversation for half hour knowing that we will uh, continue at uh, on the 28th with ETF. So with that said that even took time and we have seven minutes left. How, how much time, uh, Faisal, uh, would you need to give a quick summary on uh, blockchain? Um, I, I suppose I can always leave my slides on, right? People can read about it. And if they have questions, we can entertain those. Okay. I think then maybe it would be good to go into the, into the wrap-up. Uh, uh, input from, from Richard, uh, uh, optionally from, from Alexander. And so that we can comfortably uh, complete the block by nine o'clock uh, and then uh, continue. Uh, Vera, does that sound like a, a good plan for, for the, the media side? Yes, absolutely. Okay, wonderful. Okay, then uh, with it on the screen, uh, knowing we'll continue this after nine o'clock and perhaps get into it a little bit more uh, for next week, uh, where we can have the full, uh, more additional components to FinTech. Uh, let's get uh, Richard's uh, uh, thoughts here. Uh, Richard, we had a nice conversation yesterday uh, when you were asking about what is quantum and uh, what can it do? I think what we've done here is uh, attempted to explain the benefit which is, the, which is the quantum security blanket. So no more $2.8 million hacks uh, in order to create more uh, confidence uh, for both users uh, and the banks uh, and the regulators, uh, knowing that we will be sending this, this presentation uh, to a regulator who has expressed some interest. Uh, what we have not gone into as much detail I think is the technicality of how that's done. And we'll identify that as a weakness at the moment, which we can explore uh, post nine o'clock and to get into more detail. But from the practical point of view of wanting to, to work with you uh, for Dark Star's coin, to want to work with CAD T as a prime candidate in order to demonstrate additional security to make CAD T uh, even more desirable in the in the financial, including the investment market, uh, have you heard enough from us? Do you have more questions? Do you have recommendations? And and you're on mute at the moment. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Yeah. So I mean, uh, I'm thinking. Uh, 
Uh, I know a uh, quantum computing that will be next uh, generation of, uh, you know, for basic infrastructure for everything. So, I mean, uh, uh, when is the best time to maybe upgrade the, or transform from uh, my uh, block a BVC chain based uh, digital currency, upgrade uh, to your uh, blockchain or a quantum to quantum uh, infrastructure. In this way, you know, we can build up a more safe, secure, even a faster um, digital payment. So yeah, I think uh, when will that day will be uh, coming. So two year, three year, or uh, that's why I'm, uh, I'm thinking uh, how we can, uh, maybe I should tell my engineer start to uh, research on this, uh, when we can uh, start and, to integ yeah, integrate it uh, together. And, and, to, and to support that question, and we can talk more about it uh, post nine o'clock, is uh, uh, Faisal, uh, Dr. Faisal Shah Khan has actually created a baby mini uh, or a baby quantum internet uh, back at, at uh, Khalifa University in the UAE and has worked oh. with the vendors. So we have the capability of actually expanding upon that and understanding mm -hmm. the combinations of permutations um, mm -hmm. of being totally within a quantum internet based on the current technology, as mm -hmm. well as a hybrid approach, uh, which is gonna be years to come. And yes. in that way, uh, we can examine the practical benefits of applying uh, our dark star blockchain or with a Q blockchain <laughs> with a Q uh, to your PVC chain. Mm -hmm. So we can practically schedule and to examine what the benefits are and to schedule therefore those benefits uh, uh, when they would, uh, when they would be realized. So thank you for mentioning that. What's nice here, Richard, is that we're actually able to apply uh, and I'll look to you, Dr. Khan, to verify this. We can apply COIN, the quantum security blanket, to CAD-T, to your stablecoin cryptocurrency prior to applying our quantum technology to your blockchain. And this is unusual, usually the other way around. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Khan, would you please verify that I got that right? You're, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, uh, Dave, uh, yes, you, you have it partly right, I would say. Uh, the exact details uh, how, of how this would work uh, is that you, know, you would basically uh, enhance the current blockchain, right, for CAT-T with um, QRNG technology, quantum random number generating technology, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the name of it. That's the, that's the technological name for the quantum source uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So that will happen uh, when you apply it to the blockchain for CAT-T, for example. So, mm -hmm. so that's doable. The blockchain uh, for CAT-T would become blockchain with a Q when the quantum internet is around, which is not the case at the moment. And proper, and I should say proper quantum internet, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And when that happens, then you'll be able to actually utilize more advanced uh, features of quantum technology like entanglement, uh, you know, where you can actually have stronger correlations between data blocks than are possible in regular technology. Right, uh, okay. Yeah. So I think you validated that we can, we can support CAD-T uh, with our coin product prior to supporting the underlying blockchain with our core blockchain product. Correct. Okay, and we can iron out the, the, the details uh, even, even in the next half hour. Uh, what I'd like to do though, is to uh, bring to a close the official part of this meetup where we were looking to convince Richard uh, uh, by sharing our, our knowledge of technology and Richard sharing uh, 
his knowledge of his products and to see if it did make sense publicly to move forward uh, while supporting any questions that, that came uh, from the audience, which we, sorry, we didn't uh, offer. Uh, but representative of that is, is Alexander. And uh, perhaps what I'll do here, because it's 901, is to uh, thank uh, the panel, uh, thank the audience, uh, in order for Vera, and uh, thank Vera, to uh, wrap up uh, this first component so that uh, it can be nicely chunked and shared with either investors, because Richard, I understand uh, that you are open to institutional investment as of mm -hmm. April, 2021. We also want to share this uh, with the regulator who, who has some interest in what we're doing and of, uh, to other interested parties. Uh, Richard, could you just confirm that uh, what I said was correct? You are open to institutional investors uh, for uh, April 2021, next month? Oh, yes, yes. We um, yeah, would like uh, uh, your help uh, to connect with the uh, institutional uh, investor. Hopefully we can successfully close our uh, concurrent financing to complete our RTO and get listed by the end of April or early May. And before that, uh, we need to close uh, up to 2 million uh, concurrent finance. So in April, so hopefully you can help, uh, yeah, help uh, BBCI and uh, yeah, we can achieve uh, that goal. Mm. Very good, Richard. And, and this will be noted by, by Alexander. Uh, Alexander, do you have a, a, a closing word uh, bef before we, we uh, let Vera uh, close the formal component? Uh, I do not have anything specific for closing. I think this is a very, very good rundown of, of everything that's being worked on and just uh, excited to speak further about the more financial side of what we're planning on the 29th. Very good, thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Alexander's acting as somewhat of an auditor uh, to keep things straight, uh, where he needs some hard numbers that we have to, he will ask for, we provide. And in this way, uh, we have balance in what we're doing, balancing our enthusiasm uh, with, with what the market actually requires. And that's the role that, that Alexander is, is playing as a, as a friendly third party. So thank you for that, Alexander. Uh, Faisal, uh, perhaps uh, what we'll do is, is uh, at this point, uh, and for Vera, we'll close off the official uh, first component uh, of the meetup. So it's packaged in approximately uh, what, one hour. Uh, do you need anything else uh, for us to say or do? Uh, and then we'll continue until 9.30. Um, uh, so do you mean that we will stop the recording of the event? Is that the plan or...? That's the plan. Okay, sure. No, I'm okay with that. Um, um, I can uh, I can say my few words as the founder of Mesa, uh, and thank everybody who who joined us today. Uh, Captain Coles there, and I think I saw Dr. Tuhe uh, earlier, uh, who are people, of course, you know we are uh, you know familiar with and close to. So I'm uh, I was really excited to see them. Uh, Richard, uh, it was an amazing uh, discussion you you know shared with us. Um, very exciting. Uh, I, I would love to get my hands on your uh, <laughs> cat tea and quantize it. <laughs> and, uh, I hope that will happen. And uh, thank you to Lucy, um, who shared uh, with us some information about uh, your company. Uh, that was very useful. Alexander, we'll uh, chat later. <clears throat> we'll talk to you for the next event. Uh, and uh, you know, everybody who's attending will see Alexander then. And uh, Vera, thank you so much. <laughs> for your, as usual, awesome and excellent work uh, as the media person for, for uh, you know, for, well, for Darkstar, but in this case also for Mesa. And, and that's an added benefit that I'm uh, taking advantage of. And I'm really thankful for that. So uh, with that, uh, Dave, uh, back to you. And uh, from my side, uh, all's well.